like, uh, for example, this is just a little uh, uh, element I got over at uh, Home Depot. The inside of this and leave this uh, uh, stained. Now, this sounds kind of weird, I know, but what you can do is take a potato and cut it in half and then rub it on this part where you don't want the gold to stick, okay? And, um, and that leaves some kind of a little, just a light film or something on there, and then you go ahead and gild, and then after everything's dry, then you just take a wet cloth or something and wipe off of whatever the potato was on there. And uh, you can also use talc, or uh, another method would be to use egg white mixed with a little bit of water, stir it up real good, and paint that on there. And again, that'll wash off with water once you um, so that's you know a couple of ways of masking. If you don't put sizing on that, I thought it wouldn't stick. Uh, well, it, it shouldn't. Um, basically, if if your varnish is good and dry, theoretically it won't. Um, you know, it, it, and usually if it does, you can you can wipe it off or even just lick your finger and rub it off. So it, it's not generally a problem. Uh, I have seen this was painted. This was varnished uh, um, the day before yesterday, so it should be dry, but I have seen some cases where, you know, the varnish wasn't completely dry uh, or really cured hard, so we'll find out in a minute how that one did. I guess you get into kind of the wood with some sap in it, and that would be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so you would have to contend with that. So you would usually want to wood before you um, before you gild. Um, you know, so you've got everything else around it. Now, again, after this is finished, you can clear over it. But now, the only problem with clearing over gold, the only time you really want to do that is uh, if it's going to be handled or touched or in some cases, like on a, on a Chris Craft, it's going to be on a boat that might get washed or something. You don't really want something to be able to scratch it off. So, so you can clear See how it loses just a little bit of the, this is, uh, this is the gold here, and you can see how it loses a little bit of the sheen, um, but it does protect it. Usually what I like to use, if you're, if you're going to use uh, marine, doors. Um, most of my are outdoors. Aren't so you, you know there's some of it some of those concerns you don't really have to worry about. Um, let me keep going on this here. Uh, do, would anybody like to lay some of this? Um, I'll let some this piece. Up. I'm working on something else. You want to try? Yeah. set up? Just set you up right there. Is um, right here. Just grab this right here okay. and just lay it in and press it on. Oh, one other thing. You one of them, right? Yeah. And when you get to something like this, real, this is obviously real yeah. smooth here, so that's not a problem. When you get to something rough like that, go ahead and lay one right on okay. top of there. I'll tell you what I'll do. You can take kind of a, a soft but fairly stiff brush. Mm -hmm. And just kind of jam it in there. Go ahead and what stick what it on there again. Yeah, I see. What and you just kind of bounce that way. on there, and that'll kind of get it in those little grooves there. Okay, let me get over here on this. And side. see how that works there. Okay, yeah. And um, give me that sucker. Let <laughs> see from uh, from samples down here. I mean, you can put it on almost anything. Uh, Terry, the guy over in England, he just sent me a picture of an 1896 horse-drawn hearse that he did, and all the elements on there, all the little pieces and doodads and squigglies and flourishes, leafed all of it. In my application, uh, do uh, a dress type things like that. Um, you can do it in size. This is raised, of course. Uh, this right here is a, an aluminum panel. Uh, this is gold right here. This is silver leaf right here. 
Uh, this was made by Brian the Brush, a very talented pinstripe artist up in uh, New York. And um, you see how this has a pattern in there behind it? This is called engine turning, and that started with um, mostly with fire engines. Um, and the thing about that is whenever you work flat like that, there's no dimension f like, like this to bounce from different directions. And so when you work flat like that, sometimes the gold, it's not as impressive. So what you can do once it's laid on there, you take a uh, little foam, I think, old paintbrush piece of foam and then black, or it doesn't matter what color, but velvet. And, and then you take it here, and you just push it into the gold and spin it. Not hard, but what that does, the velvet scratches it just a little bit, gives you this, um, gives you that engine turn effect here. Is that after it dries real well on the side ends? When you, you, put, you do that then? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Actually, you can lay the gold and do it immediately. Okay. Yeah, no, or you can wait, you know, a day or whatever. Uh, the gold is, you know, is pretty soft, so, I mean, it will scratch. Um, um, and, and, and that's what these do, is just put some little tiny in there. Um, and we'll, shit, we'll, we'll do a piece like that. Um, there's a couple of other products here. Um, use that on uh, on boats. This is a 22 karat adhesive back vinyl, I say vinyl, it's a, a, a co uh, coated with Tedlar. It's about an 11 year outdoor life, which is which is pretty good for that. Um, again, this is not, this is not the next best things. That's, that's a pretty good product out there. Um, let's see here. I also wanted to show you this book. Uh, this is probably the Gilder's Bible right here. It was uh, written back in the 60s um, for sign painters uh, uh, trying to figure out how to do it. And uh, it was revised again by Kent Smith, a very talented Gilder in Colorado, uh, also a letterhead. Um, and, and it's got everything from the, the glass gilding and the surface gilding. This is called surface gilding. The glass gilding is a whole other ball game that we won't even get into today, but it's, um, that's what you'd see like at banks or, you know, real fancy uh, 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 glass stuff. Um, but that's, that's a great book if you, if you need a reference material to do this. So, um, let's do one of these in... Um, Try some white gold on this one. Like I say these are just little elements from. Um, that was not quite ready there. Special brush when you're applying the size? Uh, clean. <laughs> clean and soft. Um, usually I buy these little, uh, um, they're, they're not very expensive. I buy these at Michael's. You buy a pack of them for 20 for like a, five bucks and um, different sizes. It's fairly soft but, but firm. Um, anyway, that makes a great brush and when they start getting dirty or getting something down the heel, I just toss them. I mean, they're, they're, they aren't expensive so you don't have to go out and buy some fancy brush for it. The main thing is you just don't want to get any kind of old paint or grit or dirt or whatever. Everything you Everything you gill is going to show up on the guild. Um, I don't know if you can see from back there, but now this was a, a computer computer routed um, letter, and I didn't even see these little computer you know these pass lines on here until after I got the guild on there. Uh, and it, it really doesn't matter on these because they were going way up on a building, so you wouldn't see them anyway. But now, if I were doing something that were really up close, where you're going to be seeing it from this far away, that should have all been sanded down real smooth. Uh, the smoother and and more sealed you get, the better your guild is. Um, and you never get all the. You never clean a brush. You can never clean a brush. Eh, complete. Com probably not. I, I'm probably use that three or four <laughs> times and then and then toss it. You know. Mm -hmm. um, now once you get um, once you get your gold on there, you got to put a whole bunch on there. Okay, then let me start. Getting keep working. Keep working. Okay, then. And use. Uh, let's see. Let me give you. Let's see what pattern. 
I mean, I mean, hey, I violated your principle already, but I got more time than many anyway. There we go. Oh, there we go. I usually just lick my finger and then grab that top sheet just okay. like that. Can I lick my own finger thing? <laughs> Now this piece I, I uh, sized a little while ago, and, and you see I've got some size up here. I like to go a little bit wider or, or even just you know put a piece right here so that you can drag your finger on that rather than dragging it right across the letter. Uh, and that's, that's about ready to go there. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let me see if I can. Can you hear it? It just it's you just it squeaks. It's like a uh, like a clean plate or something. You know, it's kind of squeaks on there. Um, let's do. Um, I was saying you can build almost anything. This is uh, <laughs> the the ass end of the hippopotamus. I bought some kind of little weird thing and I made something from the front and then I said, well, well what am I going to do with that? And I thought, well, I'll go leaf it. That's what you do with it. <laughs> uh, does anybody else want to lay this? There's nothing to it. Um, anyway, I'm just going to lay this on here. Can you can you see that? Um, uh, you can. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to lay it right over the top of that whole letter, and you can see how it'll it'll cover up the whole thing there. Does this stuff spread much? Uh, can you can you feather it out, or does everything have to be covered, or can you say that it it could fill up a? Yeah, well, you want to get kind of what you've got where you've got some loose stuff on there, and then our makeup brush is going to fill in the blanks. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is there any benefit to applying multiple layers? Um. Yeah. Um. You mean as a, like like apply a layer, let it all dry, and then redo it again? Yeah. You almost have to on glass because you're going to get little pinholes and stuff like that. On something like this, generally what you want to do is have a a yellow background or some kind of a, a, a dark yellow, something like that, um, or or gold. You know, you could paint, you could put the size on there, and then and then if you miss, if the little pinholes they don't show up you don't even notice them um, on glass you would notice it because it, it, it's a black dot um, so you know um, generally on, on a surface goal like this for example once we hit it with this stuff you would just go back with some of these little pieces right there if you see a hot what they call a holiday and you just go back there and just dab it on there and it should cover it up now if if you don't see it till after the size is completely dry, then you got to go back in there and you size it. And 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 you don't want to just put a dot on there where the where the hole is because you'll just see a dot where you put the goal. You pretty much have to go ahead and re redo the entire letter, even though you're only covering one dot. Um, now this stuff is not it's not made to be perfectly smooth and even and all. It's supposed to have a little bit of a hand done look, so there's nothing wrong with that. Um, makeup brush, and usually what I do is just a little bit of a swirl like that. Now what you're seeing right there is the outline that I peeled off after I put the size on, then I peel that outline that I had cut on the outside. So that's where I'm going to be painting the outline on there. And you just kind of swirl this off. This is also can be called burnishing, um, which I'm going to show you a burnished piece that's really cool over there.